All right. Um, we talked a little bit about this already when everyone was in here, so I don't want to get too far into it. But um, as you know, we're under a consent decree. Oakland has been under a consent decree for, it sounds like, decades at this point. Can you talk to um, your efforts in ending it under under Oakland, if there were any efforts, and maybe why it didn't end, um, if you're such a champion for ending it here, and maybe what's that plan? You know, consent decrees are, are, are living documents, it seems to be. And my experience in Oakland, as well as 14 chiefs in front of me, would be that we'd get really close, and then at times the definitions changed, or the goalposts changed. And so that's kind of one of the, the challenges associated with consent decrees. And I do plan to have a good working relationship with the monitor to make sure that everything is clearly laid out yeah. so there's no misunderstanding. What do we have to do to get over the finish line? If we need to clearly define terms, mm -hmm. such as what is accountability? What, what does that mean? So I do plan to um, become very granular with the federal monitor to clearly lay out the path. And then we're going to work it, and we're going to accomplish it. And um, moving towards uh, the force specifically and the numbers that we have right now, the mayor inherited a team of about 1,200 or so. Now we're just around 900. It's a pretty small force. Um, can you talk to those numbers that you're inheriting and um, I know those numbers have also affected morale so what is your plan to kind of get recruitment as well as the morale of the department back up? Right, it, it, staffing is a crisis and so what I do plan to do is to um, actually what we want to do is raise standards when I was an athlete and I have always been aware that when you are the best team out there, you will never hurt for people lining up to get in, in, in on your team. There will be a line out the door waiting to get on the team. New Orleans is that team. And so, but specifically, I do know that we, I want to target uh, for immediate help and immediate relief is to look at laterals, particularly internally or in state is what I meant by that. But laterals are also a challenge. They are uh, a positive, and they can be a challenge. Um, and I want a homegrown. So we're going to have to map out what is our hiring process right now, try to look for efficiency so that we can make these processes quicker, and so that we can always hire the best of the best. But I will not compromise. They are not hurting so bad that you have to take anyone just because they want to be a police officer. You must be the best of the best to be on any team I, I want to lead. And now some of that, uh, those numbers in the depleted force has affected response times, unfortunately. Yes. We've, we have done a little bit better in the past few months, but um, between last year and this year, it's, it's been a struggle. We've done many stories on that. How do you see your um, approach to that and those response right. times? First of all, these officers and, and professional staff members are getting grinded out. They cannot keep up. They are not going to be safe unless they are able to have proper staffing with them. And so response times do matter, and the public expects that. But we have to have the officers and professional staff members be safe. And that will always be my number one priority, is to make sure that occurs. So um, we're going to have to look at how we do business with the numbers we have today not trying to police as though we are a 1,500 member force. We are not a 1,500 member force. I'm going to do everything I can to get you back to 1,700. But um, that, that's the issue at hand. And yes, uh, there has been improvement, but I will not let these officers and staff have their safety um, challenged. And I'm going to do everything I can to not grind them out. Speaking of, you know, the plan to address crime as, a, as what we are compared to what we want to be, what is your uh, plan right now for, 
fighting crime that we're seeing in the city. Um, we're constantly on the top 10 of homicides yes. and murders across the nation. So what's your plan to tackle that? That was the same as in Oakland. Oakland tended to be up in the top 10. Uh, in Oakland, we worked a pure form of an operation ceasefire right now under the mayor's uh, you know, gun crime reduction plan. You have a lot of elements of Operation Ceasefire. There are some other plans as well that the city has looked at, and I do plan to get together with the members of this department and leadership as well, and the community, and to say, which plan are we going to go with? Because you can't just keep changing plans. So it's not a matter of new strategy, but let's choose the strategy and then implement it. That will be my operation, my operative approach. Let's work the plan. Now, what are some of your the top things that you want to tackle here in New Orleans? We have um, a lot of armed robberies. As I said, a lot of shootings, both non-fatal and fatal. We have a lot of carjackings that have uh, right. spiked both here and across the country. Right. What are some of the things that you want to focus on and hone in on? Because I imagine you can't tackle everything all at once in your first few weeks here. Any time a person's life could end, that's not a statistic to me. That number is someone's loved one. That is someone's son, daughter, friend. So I will always prioritize uh, someone potentially losing their life. That's why aggravated assaults, assaults uh, that lead up to homicide, that's a loss of life. And that will always be my number one. Yes, uh, I don't want anyone to be victimized. I don't even care if it's the smallest of crimes. Uh, uh, a quality of life crime. I don't want people to be victimized. But of course you have to triage. So I will triage the violent crimes first, but we have victims of sexual abuse, and the caseload of these detectives are off the charts. So there is going to be a triage associated with who is most wounded, and life will always be my number one life. You talked earlier about um, leadership and how leadership isn't just a rank or isn't just a title, but it's earned. How do you plan on earning um, that respect and that leadership, not just from the NOPD, but the community? I feel like the community, from what we've heard as journalists and reporters, are at a point that it's getting to a point that it's really hard right now for them. Um, they're very non-trusting sometimes because this is their home. They care about it so much as they should. So what is your plan to earn that leadership and respect from both? Sides. Well, leadership is relational, and therefore you actually have to go face to face, meet one another, hear one another, and engage the community. That is and being consistent, being predictable, following up, and then engaging, bringing people on board to be a part of the plan. And the plan does include the community. So any kind of crime-fighting plans must involve the community. So I think it's a matter of treating people with respect and dignity, how I engage them in word and in conduct. Do I look at you? Do I show uh, kindness in just my demeanor? Uh, do I speak uh, straightforward and honestly? Do I read people well? This is what people are hanging off of. But leadership has to do with, can you make decisions? Do you have a vision? Do you care about your people? Those are character traits. And so I plan to live what are the traits that I say I believe in.